Hi, I'm John, K3QF, and in this video, I'll be showing you how I installed my VHF UHF dual band ham radio in my Tesla Model Y. It's a 2022 model year, and I have a few tips and tricks I'd like to show you in this video. I've been installing radios in cars ever since, even before I was licensed in the 1970s. And since then, I've installed my own HF and VHF, UHF radios in my own cars. I've worked professionally installing two-way radios, and I reckon that I've installed more than 500 uh, through-hole mount antennas like the NMO connector. In 2015, I bought a Toyota Prius and noticed that the install there took a special care and that I was no longer able to drill holes in the firewall for power or for antennas. And after that, I bought a Nissan LEAF, which is a pure electric vehicle, and installed a radio in that. Now with my Tesla Model Y, there are some very careful considerations that need to be taken into account. I think of them as the ABCs of install. A for antenna, B for battery or power, how do you power that radio, and C for control head. Where do you mount all of the control head, the RF unit, the speaker, the microphone? So let's get started. A, antennas. I selected the K400S lip mount uh, from Diamond to install on my 2015 Prius and have reused it now on the Tesla. It's a lip mount that has four anchor points underneath the lip of the, uh, the trunk or the lid, and I've decided to put that antenna mount about halfway down on the driver's side of the back lift gate. That is a ferrous material. It's steel. It's not aluminum like so much of the Model Y body. And so you have a good strong place for a mount. There's enough space in between the panel gaps to put the, the antenna mount. And then the cable is run forward and looped down along the channel for the uh, lift gate mechanism. And it's tucked underneath the back tail light assembly and finally run up over the sill of the, um, the door seal uh, along the back gate. This RG316 cable is incredibly small. And of course, that's a compromise with losses in signal, but it is uh, doable to run it through that seal without too much abrasion happening and without too much loss of cabin um, integrity in terms of moisture and cold and noise ingress. Notice that I hold down the cable with the VHB tape, which is really good at keeping the cable in place so that opening and closing the latch won't cause it to snag or otherwise move from the position where you want it to be held. B for battery. The Tesla Model Y is not a car that you want to drill a hole up front to get to the low voltage battery in order to power your radio. Beginning in about 2022, Tesla put a lithium ion low voltage battery in place of the traditional lead acid batteries. These low voltage batteries run the computers, so they don't have to be that big. But the voltage on the lithium ion low voltage battery is about 15.4 and 15.6 volts nominal, which is a little bit too high for the radio. So you don't want to run even directly off of a cigarette lighter. You need to come up with some other kind of solution. I had lots of lithium ion packs around that have a lower nominal voltage. And I found a buck boost converter on Amazon, 
that I used to constant current, constant voltage charge this pack with, and I put the radio RF unit right on that pack and power the buck boost converter at a constant one amp in order to keep it charged. And so I'm able to keep the battery and RF unit in the back of the car down underneath in one of the storage areas. The antenna is right there coming in the back. And so it's a very neat setup for both the antenna and the RF unit and the power. There is a cigarette lighter plug right in the back side, uh, back quarter panel of the Tesla Model Y. And so the power is there. And all I need to do now, route the control head up to the front of the car. The type of battery I used is a BioEno 30 amp hour battery. You might want to consider something smaller. However, if you live in a cold climate, you need to make sure that you do not charge this battery lower than zero Celsius, 32 Fahrenheit, below freezing. Uh, the batteries will be ruined if they are charged when the cell temperatures are too low. So what I do is make sure that I have large enough capacity and I just pull the cigarette lighter plug out and do not charge the battery when it gets too cold. 30 amp hours will run that two-way radio a long time before I have to charge it up. The BioEno batteries do have a battery management system in them to keep them from overcharging. But if you set the DROC buck boost converter for a constant voltage of 13.8 to 14 volts, it will never overcharge. As the battery gets full, the current drawn from the Tesla will actually drop to zero or some very low amount because the uh, radio RF unit is permanently hooked up and it does have just a few milliamps of draw. In addition, I put extra Anderson power pole outputs on this battery so I can use it to run my compressor fridge when we go camping. So it's very versatile power supply charged by the Tesla and powers the radio and other accessories at the same time. And now we come to C, control head. Where in the world do you mount the control head of a radio in the Tesla where everything is buttoned up really nicely. The, con the screen is taking up most of the center dash. Um, what I've decided to do is custom make my own bracket out of L bracket material. And I decided to put a wooden shim on it to hold the bracket back away from the back of the screen so that the radio head would not stick out too far as I hung it underneath the center screen console. You will have to find some way to fashion your own bracket that hangs underneath the screen. I tried many options, even the suction cup mounts from for cell phones, but that was not as good as my own homemade bracket. Once I had the bracket made, then I used the metal strip off of a cell phone magnet holder. It's metal, it's not magnetic, and I fastened that on the back of the, the plastic mount that the head actually slides onto. And then I held that onto the metal brackets using very high bond magnets. And so I'm able to remove that control head and just have the bracket hanging down kind of out of the way of the screen if I ever take the radio out, the control head off. So finally, with the control head kind of as I want it, I put VHB tape on the wooden part and stick that on the back of the screen very carefully, making sure it's all leveled up and all uh, as neat and placed as I want it to be. For the microphone, I just loop it around the back of the screen. It stays out of the way most of the time. And that seems to be a good solution. You might want to mount a mic clip, maybe on the back of the screen with VHB tape, or just tuck it away when you're not using it. For speaker placement, I use the hook and loop and held the speaker in place kind of in the center, behind the center console 
And that's where I have the cable routing coming forward. And so there's a, a natural placement of the speaker uh, underneath the passenger seat or beside the passenger seat uh, in the back of the, the car, as you can see in the, in the picture here. The, the routing of the cable then is very easy using the hook and loop to kind of tuck it out of way. And uh, because it's black and the carpet is black, you don't even see the wire routing. I hope this has given you some ideas about how to mount a two-way radio in the Tesla. What I have found is that it's very radio quiet. I don't hear any noise on VHF and UHF. And so uh, I'm able to go ham radio mobile in my brand new Tesla Model Y. Hope you have success too. If you found this video helpful, please consider a donation on the tab below.